James Patrick Page born 9 January 1944 is an English musician and producer who achieved international success as the guitarist and founder of the rock band Led Zeppelin. Prolific in creating guitar riffs, Page's style involves various alternative guitar tunings and melodic solos, coupled with aggressive, distorted guitar tones. Page was born to James Patrick Page and Patricia Elizabeth Gaffigan in the West London suburb of Heston on 9 January 1944. His father was a personnel manager at a plastic coatings plant and his mother who was of Irish descent was a doctor's secretary. In 1952, they moved to Feltham and then to Miles Road, Epsom in Surrey. Page was educated from the age of eight at Epsom County Pound Lane Primary School and when he was 11 he went to Ewell County Secondary School in West Ewell. This other guitarist was a boy called Rod Wyatt a few years his senior and together with another boy Pete Calvert, they would practice at Page's house. Page would devote six or seven hours on some days to practicing and would always take his guitar with him to secondary school, only to have it confiscated and returned to him after class. Among Page's early influences were rockabilly guitarist Scotty Moore and James Burden who both played on recordings made by Elvis Presley. At the age of 13 Page appeared on Hugh Weldon's All Your Own Talent Quest program in a skiffle quartet, one performance of which aired on BBC One in 1957. The group played Mama Don't Want to Skiffle Anymore and another American-flavored song in them old cotton fields back home. In short with the emergence of such bands as the Rolling Stones in the early 60s and their gritty blues rock, Page's interest in music perked up once again, but instead of forming a band right away he decided to hone his craft by becoming one of England's top session guitarists and producers. Although the exact specifics of which sessions he was involved with have become hazy over time, it's confirmed that he worked with many of the day's top acts including The Who, Them, Donovan, the Kinks and the Rolling Stones among others. By 1966 Page was looking to put his session work on hold and join a full-time band. He accepted an offer to play with the Yardbirds, as he was paired up with another one of rock's all-time guitar greats Jeff Beck. Although the Yardbirds began as a straight-ahead blues rock band with the inclusion of Page in the lineup, the group began experimenting with psychedelic and hard rock style. Despite it being obvious that the Yardbirds were on the downside of their career, Page appeared on the album Little Games and several tours before the band finally called it a day in 1968. With a string of tour dates still set up throughout Europe, Page decided to go through with the shows and put together a new band that was dubbed the New Yardbirds including longtime session bassist John Paul Jones, plus newcomers Robert Plant on vocals and John Bonham on drums. After the completion of their initial tour the band changed its name to Led Zeppelin and explored the still largely uncharted territory of hard rock or heavy metal. The band immediately became one of rock's most successful and enduring bands, issuing a string of classic albums from 1969 through 1975. Page also found the time to work with folk artist Roy Harper. Zeppelin was arguably the biggest rock band in the world by the mid-70s their influence on other rock bands following in their wake cannot be stressed enough as they launched their own record company Swansong, but it was around this time that Page began dabbling with heroin and other substances, eventually leading to him becoming a full-blown addict by the late 70s or early 80s. Also Page's interest in the occult became a concern to those around him he went as far as purchasing a mansion on the Loch Ness in Scotland that was once owned by renowned Satanist Alistair Crowley. Zeppelin continued issuing albums until the dawn of the 80s, but tragedy ultimately derailed the quartet the death of Plant's young son in 1977 and Bonham's alcohol-related death in 1980. After Led Zeppelin decided to call it quits in late 1980, Page disappeared from sight it became known later on that he hardly touched his instrument for a long time afterward. It wasn't until 1982 that Page began to emerge from his self-imposed exile, as he composed and played on the motion picture soundtrack to Death Wish 3, compiled the Zeppelin Outtakes Collection Coda and took part in the 1983 star-studded arms tour which saw Page unite with Beck and Eric Clapton for a series of shows that raised money for multiple sclerosis research. 
In 1984 Page guested alongside Plant, Beck and Nile Rodgers on the hit EP of rock and roll oldies The Honey Drippers, and formed his first band since the demise of Zeppelin dubbed The Firm. The group featured former Free or Bad Company vocalist Paul Rogers, and despite the fact that their self-titled debut was a sizable hit, the band decided to call it a day shortly after the release of its lukewarm received sophomore effort Mean Business. Led Zeppelin fans were given a rare treat when Zeppelin's surviving three members reunited with drummers Tony Thompson and Phil Collins for the Mammoth Live Aid at Philadelphia's JFK Stadium in July 1985, unfortunately handing in an incredibly under-rehearsed sloppy performance. Zeppelin reunited again in 1988 for the Atlantic Records' 25th anniversary concert at New York's Madison Square Garden, and yet again performed another mistake-filled miniset. The same year Page guested on Plant's solo release Now and Zen, as well as issuing his first ever solo recording Outrider, following it up with a tour that touched upon tracks from all eras of his career. By the early 90s further rumors of an impending Zeppelin reunion continued to circulate and after Plant declined an invitation from Page to join forces once again, Page decided to collaborate with former Deep Purple or Whitesnake vocalist David Coverdale whose vocal style was often compared to Plant's over the years. Page's latest project only lasted a single album, 1993's heavily Zepp-like Coverdale or Page, as a proposed world tour was scrapped in favor of just a few select dates in Japan. In 1994 Plant and Page finally agreed to collaborate once again, leading to the release of the acoustics at no quarter the same year, plus a highly popular MTV Unplugged special and sold-out world tour. A year later Led Zeppelin were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, this being the second time a Page-related band got the nod from the hall. The year 1998 saw Plant and Page issue an album of all-new material, walking into Clarksdale which was surprisingly not well received by the public, sinking from sight shortly after its release. The duo went their separate ways by the late 90s, as Page joined the Black Crows for a tour and live album. The same year as the album's release another Crows or Page tour was cut short due to a back injury Page suffered, but in June of 2001 Page took to the concert stage alongside Plant to celebrate the 60th birthday of Roy Harper. In 2005 Page was appointed Office of the Order of the British Empire in recognition of his charity work and the following year he was inducted along with the rest of Led Zeppelin into the UK Music Hall of Fame. A one-off charity concert with all of the surviving Led Zeppelin members with Jason Bonham on drums, occurred in 2007 at the O2 Arena in London and in 2008 Page appeared in and co-produced the guitar documentary It Might Get Loud which focused on the careers and playing styles of Page, Jack White, and U2 The Edge. In 2012 Page, Plant and Jones received the prestigious Kennedy Center honors from President Barack Obama in a White House ceremony amidst rumors circulating about a possible Led Zeppelin reunion in anticipation of the forthcoming deluxe reissues of the band's first three studio albums. By 2014 those rumors had mostly abated, and Page announced that he was going to put together a band and tour as a solo act for the first time since 1988. 